Well, many thanks, uh, Wakaba. Indeed, uh, it was one fast and smooth ride, if I would describe it in simple words. And um, I could say the train was quite comfortable when we left Nairobi at about 2 p.m. We got uh, into Mombasa just at about 5.30 p.m. And we had the one stopover at Mtito Ande. And... Uh, Testament to what we've been hearing, we, we actually did get to experience firsthand what the train is all about in terms of the cabin setup as well as the speed. It was quite uh, trying to live up to the expectations. So, Akaba, right now where I'm standing at is at the cargo terminal where President Uhuru Kenyatta is expected to flag off the freight train at around 2.30 p.m. We do know that um, the president has been looking forward towards uh, this particular launch, knowing pretty well that um, they had set a date of June. And um, the dates are here, Wakaba. And um, I just want to show you some of the locomotives that are here at the moment. And um, what you can see to my right, these are the main locomotives that will be carrying the cargo when the president will be launching them. It will be going at a speed of about 100 kilometers per hour. And um, it is expected that um, once it has been flagged off, the same train will be received by the deputy president, William Ruto, in Nairobi. We do know that um, it's going to take close to eight to nine hours to get to Nairobi. But um, once the president checks in Wakaba, we'll be giving you the latest from that. We also have with us the Commissioner General for Kenya Revenue Authority, and that is John Njiraini, who will be joining us right now. And um, we want to bring in the Commissioner General, and uh, many thanks, uh, Mr. Njiraini. Quite a historic day for the country. Yes, indeed. It's a, a great uh, moment, and uh, we should all be proud about it. Uh, it has very significant implications for the country and especially for business because uh, uh, it's going to really transform uh, business in terms of uh, the speed and delivery of cargo, the cost that is involved. And for us as a, a Kenya Revenue Authority, we are very excited because it's also going to very substantially uh, lead to improvements in the way we do business. Of course, um, many would like to know KRA has been coordinating the customs business in terms of uh, collecting taxes. Um, will things change with the SGR coming? Um, of course, uh, we expect more cargo volumes to be cleared at the port. Um, is KRA prepared to handle the numbers? And do we know even the numbers? Do you have projections? Do you have forecasts? Yes, indeed we have. Uh, on, a day, on a daily basis, we handle about 2,000 containers. And uh, the carriage capacity of the wagons that we have here will be about a thousand containers a day. That essentially mean, means that a half of the port is going to move to uh, Nairobi. And so what has happened for customs is that the importance of uh, Mombasa as the clearing base is going to be you know, reduced uh, in the sense of uh, the fact that the, the load will now be shared between Mombasa and Nairobi. And for that reason, we have invested a lot now also in uh, preparing ourselves to be able to handle the business that will be coming through Nairobi. A number of ways, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. One, for example, we have uh, uh, created a whole new business process. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fundamental thing that is going to happen is that all the cargo that comes to the dry port in Nairobi will be cleared in advance. The customs duties will have been paid, the customs processes will have been concluded. And so as soon as it lands on the tarmac there, it will be ready for evacuation. Right. And we have discussed with, K with KPA and agreed in order to ensure that there is no congestion, then we will uh, give uh, those who are importing cargo there a maximum of 24 hours within which to receive it, to remove it, so that uh, more cargo can then come and uh, you know, the port can continue operating efficiently. The second thing that we've done is uh, we are investing in state-of-the-art art, art equipment. I mean, state-of-the-art equipment mm -hmm. uh, in the form of scanners. We're going to have uh, five scanners that are positioned as strategic uh, 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 exits uh, out of that port to ensure that, for example, even where we have a need to look at, uh, uh, at uh, cargo a bit more deeply, we do not need to do that using the traditional methods of having to open the container. We, we, you know, we do it using a, uh, a, a, you know, modern, uh, non-intrusive uh, equipment. Okay. 
And um, Commissioner, sorry to interject, but uh, the business community is having the million dollar question. How will this impact on their businesses? Because at the end of the day, once the SGR starts operations, many are expecting it to cut their uh, business costs significantly. And um, just clarify for us, how big will, will be the margins? And of course, um, what should businessmen expect moving forward now that the cargo train is going to be commissioned today? Well, it's going to have a major impact on costs. First, uh, it will take much less time. Uh, our own estimate is that it's going to take probably a third of the time that it's used to move a container from uh, Mombasa to Nairobi. That's uh, four hours. Before that, it would take uh, not less than 12 hours. Secondly, the cost of uh, haulage will be much lower. The charges um, uh, on the SGR will be much lower uh, in comparison with what one would have paid uh, if you are doing that by road. But more, more, more importantly also is the, the speed at which uh, you can get your goods, um, which, which is important. Plus also a reduction, a very significant reduction in the risks that are associated with road transport, like pilferage, like the risk of accidents, the, and, and many other complications that we have seen about our roads. So the SGR for business is really what you might call a godsend. You know, it's what we've been waiting for. For us also, we know that it is going to very significantly transform our, our business. And one of the things that we are also looking at as customs is one major problem we have had with the, the Northern Corridor is the, the dumping of uh, transit goods. And we feel that we, the, the SGR delivers the solution that we need because dumping happens when trucks leave here and then they are diverted. For the SGR, there is no diversion. It leaves here and it goes straight where you want it to be. So we, we, we are already, for example, discussing with our counterparts in, uh, in the region, uh, especially Uganda and Rwanda, about why don't you, let's look at mechanisms through which they can collect their cargo in Nairobi. That saves them a thousand kilometers of um, you know, a return journey between Nairobi and Mombasa. Right. So it's really going to be a game changer in terms of uh, the way business is done here. Many thanks there, John Jiraini, the Commissioner General for Kenya Revenue Authority, just talking to us on what the business community should expect out of the SGR. And of course, Wakaba, many are looking forward to going on that train ride tomorrow. Today, it will be the commute, actually the cargo train, but tomorrow we expect the commuter train. And uh, of course, it is a project that was funded by the Kenya government and the Chinese government, and the costs were 327 billion shillings, quite a big amount to a cover. And um, 